हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन दी हीट इक्वेशन दिस इज द पार्ट टू ऑफ दिस टॉपिक माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर हरीश कर यू कैन फॉलो माई यूट्यूब चैनल वेर यू कैन फाइंड द प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स टू आई होप यू कैन सब्सक्राइब एंड लाइक माई वीडियो टू स्पॉट इट ना वट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस लेक्चर द ऑब्जेक्टिव इज वी विल सी हाउ वी कैन सॉल्व द हीट इक्वेशन और ऑल्सो कॉल एज द डिफ्यूजन इक्वेशन इन दिस इक्वेशन नंबर वन यू इज कॉल एज द टेम्परेचर एक्स इज माई पोजिशन एंड टी इज माई टाइम टेक now how you can solve this question that's the most important that's the that's the objective of this lecture in order to solve this equation we need some initial conditions what are those initial conditions these are my initial conditions now you can see these are numbers are my zero but this function is my unknown how you can solve the problem with this category of the fx so based on the nature of this fx i discretize this lecture into the two type the type one is when this fx is my trigonometric form like sin x cos square x anything and second category is when it is of the polynomial form like lx minus x square x square and so in our last lecture i already explained how you can solve this type one category you can see my this lecture available at my youtube channel now in this lecture i will explain you how you can solve this polynomial form category you can see i will explain you with the help of the 6 to 7 example in this lecture for example you can see the first here x which is a polynomial so it's a type 2 x square again is a type 2 every constant is a polynomial function so again is a type 2 again is a type 2 and it's a type 2 what are the various step that you can Up, uh, use them to solve this problem again i use the same step as i explain you in the type 1 what is the step number 1 is you can substitute u is x into t what is the meaning of that if i say my function is e raised to power 3 into t sin 3x then this is a function of the x only so i call this is my x and this is my capital t i can substitute this value of the u in the given equation and then we can find the solution once you know once you find the solution then you always apply the condition from this equation number 2 only whose rhs that is the right hand side is my zero for particular example in this equation number 2 which term has the right hand side zero that means this and this so i have to apply this two condition whose are a right hand side is my zero and the step number 3 is we have to apply the remaining equations remember this is a unique step you have to solve this problem in and any question you can solve with the help of the three step remember you have to apply in step number 2 firstly whose right hand side is zero so let me explain you the six or seven example in this lecture so that you can learn it simple way now my advice is uh, firstly you can try to understand what i explain you in the one or two first first two examples and then uh, from the third onward you can write it by own so now it's a heat equation now u x comma 0 is my polynomial so that means it is my type 2 so how you can solve them i can start by taking u as a function of the x into t then i can substitute this value of the x at this point what is the meaning of that partial derivative of u with respect to t so x is a constant partial derivative is my t dash double derivative of x it is equation of this form then i can rewrite it i can take x on the left hand side and t on the right hand side now you can see this is the function of the x only this is a function of the t only and both are equal this is only possible if this is my constant fine so i say lambda is my constant because left hand side is a function of the x and x. now what is the value of the lambda it can be zero it can be positive or it can be negative fine now i can simplify this i can write the first two equation x double dash minus lambda x is equal to zero and t dash minus lambda of t is my g now we consider the three cases lambda is zero positive or negative what will happen if lambda is zero i can substitute the value of lambda here is a x double dash zero and t dash 
is equal to zero. Once you know this differential equation, can you write the solution? It's a very simple because it's a differential equation. What is the auxiliary equation? As we studied in our differential equation, how you write the auxiliary equation? M square is zero. M is zero comma zero. So that means C one plus C two x e raised to power zero x is one. For the second case, what is the auxiliary equation? It's the first derivative. It's m is equal to zero. So solution will be c three e raised to power zero is one. I can substitute this u uh, value of x and t in my u. So u is my this. Now once you know this is my solution, then we have to apply all those condition whose right hand side is my zero. So this is the case. Now I can apply it. This zero means x is equal to zero. I can substitute x is zero. C one C three is equal to zero. In this case, I can substitute x is equal to a. So C one C three plus C two C three a is equal to zero. Now since C one and C three are zero, so that means C two C three is my zero. Fine. Now I can substitute both the values C two C three and C one C three in this equation. What is the value of the u x comma t? This is zero. So what does it means? It's a zero. So that means we have to discard the solution because our our solution need to be find some value. Look at the second case when lambda is my positive. That means I can take lambda is k square. I can substitute the value of the lambda in these two equations. Now, what will be the auxiliary equation again? Auxiliary equation is m square minus k square is zero. That means m is plus minus k. So that means c1 kx c2 minus kx. What is the auxiliary equation on this capital T? M minus k square zero. M is k square. So the capital T will be c3 e raised to power t square k square into t. I can substitute this value in the u. U is my this. Now since u is my temperature, fine. So as he suggested u whatever the value of the t t is my greater than 0 so it means if i substitute t is infinity then u must goes to the zero but you can see if i substitute t is my infinity then u is goes to the infinity that means not is zero therefore this solution is also discard now we have left about only the third case when lambda is minus k square Again, I can substitute the value of lambda in these two cases, and then what will be my auxiliary equation for the x? M square plus k square is zero. M is plus minus k iota. So c1 kx, c2 sine kx. Auxiliary equation for this is m plus k square is zero. M is minus k square. So c3. e raised to power minus k square into t i can substitute this x and t in my e then our target is to find the unknown constant c1 c2 and k now since this is my solution then how you can apply that i have to apply all those condition whose right hand side is my zero so let's see when x is equal to 0 i can substitute here sin 0 will be 0 cos 0 will be 1 e raised to power minus k square of t now the product will be zero either c1 will be zero or this quantity will be zero if this quantity my e raised to power is zero what is the value of the u this value will be zero that means u is my zero so therefore this case is not possible so this implies c1 will be zero because if c1 will be zero then you still have a solution now look at this case when u a comma t that is x is equal to a and t is equal to t since c1 is my zero so this value will be zero this is c2 sin k of a e raised to power minus k square of t is my zero again you have the three cases either c2 will be zero either this will be zero or this will be zero again this can never be zero because if this is zero u will be zero 
C2 again not be zero because if C2 is my zero, C1 is already a zero, then again your solution will be zero. Then the only possible case will be sine k a will be zero. Remember, sine in this case it is not written as a sine k a but it is a sine k x. So what is the meaning of that? When it will be zero, so k a will be my n pi. So what is the value of the k? K is my n pi over a. Fine. So k will be my n pi over a, where n is my zero one two. Now I can substitute this c1 and this k at this point. This is my zero. I can substitute the value of k at this point and k at this point. Now and I can replace this constant c2 by dn. Now since n has the different value, so I can use the principle of superposition and I can return here is one. Why? Because what will happen if n is my zero? If I substitute n is my zero, it will be zero. Fine. So there is no meaning to write as a zero. That's why it start from the one. Now again, it's a solution. Now you have to apply the step number third. That is, u x comma zero is my. What is the meaning of that? That means t is equal to zero. Left hand side is my x. When t is equal to zero, this number will be my one. Fine. Now the question arises: Is how we can find the unknown constant d n? Because you can you can never compare them. But if you look about that, it is a half range sine series. Once it's a half range sine series, how you can find the b n? Particularly in this case, it's a d n. It's a two upon l zero to l f x sine n pi x over a. Fine. What is the f x? F x is my x. So I can substitute this value. L is my a. Fine. I can substitute this value in this case. Now it will be f x will be my x. Now how you can solve this again? If you remember my previous lectures, how you can integrate them? Either you can integrate by parts, or you can differentiate the first function and integration of this second function divided by n pi over a and its minus sine. Over whole square, so you can take plus and minus, and that I think you all knows that based on my previous lectures. Now I can substitute the limits. When I substitute a, is a and a will be cancelled out. It's a a square over n pi, cos n pi is a minus one raised to power n. When I substitute here, it is a sine n pi is a zero. When you substitute zero, it's a zero. It's a zero. So your answer will be. This point now a will be cancelled out. I can substitute this value of the d n at this point, and you will get the solution of this problem. Now, look at the second example. I hope you can like my video as it if you feel it's a use. Now again, you can see it is my type two. Now I will solve the same way to each problem. So let's start with the first u is equal to x into t. I can substitute this value in this equation. You will get x into t dash k into this. I can take x double dash over x and t dash over k into t, which is because both are the functions, it must be constant. I can write the equation x double dash minus lambda x is equal to zero and t dash minus lambda k t is equal to g. You have the three cases. The case one is when lambda is equal to zero. I can substitute here. You have the three cases when lambda is zero, when lambda is greater than zero and less than zero. So what is the auxiliary equation of this? C one plus C two x, and for that uh, t is C three. I can substitute both the values in this case. You will get the solution. Then look at all those cases whose right hand side is my zero. That is this case. So, in order to apply this, we need the partial derivative with respect to x. What is the partial derivative with respect to x? Is c to c three. Then I can apply the first condition and second condition. Fine. So, what is the partial derivative with respect to x? Is c to c three. So, this implies c to c three is my zero. And in this case, again, you will get as c to c three is my 
zero. I can substitute this value in the given equation. You will get u x t is my c one, c three, which is a constant number. Fine, but we need a solution which are changes with respect to the x. So that means this solution is discarded. Look at the second case when lambda is my greater than zero. So you can take lambda is equal to k square as I did in my previous example. But you can see k is already present. Fine. So I can use the another symbol instead of the k. So I can take an as say alpha. I can substitute the value of t lambda at these points. You will get these two equations. Can you find the solution of this auxiliary equation? Is e raised to power alpha x plus e c to e raised to power minus alpha x. And the auxiliary equation for this case is alpha square into k. So m will be this. So I can substitute this. Then again, again you can see as you can take t approaches infinity. What is the value of the u? U will goes to the infinity. So that means this solution is also discarded. Case third, when you consider lambda is less than zero, again I can take lambda is my alpha square. You may take lambda is say my mu square, or you can take as a a square. Any sim, any term which is different from these existing symbols. What is the value of the x? For this case, it is m square plus alpha square zero. M is plus minus alpha i. C one cos alpha x. C two sine. Alpha x. For this case, my auxiliary equation will be alpha square k is equal to zero. So my capital T will be this. Substitute this value of x and t in my u. You will get this solution. Then our target is to apply c1, c2, and l. Now once we know this is my solution, then what could be the second step is we have to apply all those conditions whose right hand side is my zero. fine now before that i need to find the del u by del x because we need a partial derivative so what is the derivative of this minus c1 alpha sin alpha x and c2 alpha cos alpha x. now substitute the value that means x is my zero if x is zero this will be zero it will be my c2 alpha e raised to power minus alpha square k of t is my zero clearly say this can never be zero because if this is zero then what is the value of the u if this is zero the value of u will be zero if alpha can never be zero because why because alpha lambda is my strictly less than zero that means alpha is my is is non zero so that means if alpha is my non zero the only case will be c2 will be my zero fine now look at this case If I substitute here pi, so c1 alpha sine alpha into pi. Since c2 is my zero, so this term will be sorry. Uh, I have to yes, it's a zero. E raised to power minus alpha square k t is equal to zero. Again, this quantity can never be zero. C1 again can never be zero because c2 is already zero. If c1 is zero, then complete u will be zero. Alpha is not zero, so the only term which will be zero is sine alpha pi will be zero. Fine. So if sine alpha pi will be zero, then what is the value of the alpha pi? That is n pi. That means alpha is my n, where n start from the zero, one, two, three, so. Fine. Now I can substitute c two and the value of alpha in this equation. You will get this quantity. Because c two is my zero, alpha is my n. Fine, alpha square is my n square. I called c one is my d d n, where n start from zero one two three. Again, I can apply the principle of supervision because if I take n is zero, this value is my non zero. So that's why I start from the zero. Now you apply the last case. That means u x comma zero is my x square. I can substitute t is equal to zero in this case. So therefore, x square is my this case is my one and so. Now, could you remember which is the case? Because it's a cosine series, so it's a half range cosine series. Whenever it's a cosine series, we all know we need to compute the a zero and 
a n so in this case it's a d0 and d n what is the formula for the d0 is 1 over l 0 to l fx so here l is my pi y is a pi because you can see this range 0 to pi and fx is my x cube so what is the integration of this it is x cube over 3 from 0 to pi it is 1 over pi pi cube over 3 that means pi square over 3 is the answer of the d naught fine again i can substitute here how you can solve them again i can integrate by parts or as i explained to you in my previous lecture you can take the derivatives and you can take the integration of this you will get this solution now you can substitute the limits when you substitute pi sin n pi is 0 all remember that sin n pi is 0 cos n pi will be minus 1 raised to power n so this quantity will be 0 is a 2 pi minus 1 raised to power n over n square sin n pi will be 0 then you have to substitute the lower limit if you substitute 0 sin 0 will be 0 because of this x is a 0 this is 0 so this value will be so pi will be cancelled out it is a 4 times minus 1 of this number fine now i can substitute this value in this equation how you can substitute that i can open this bracket so u x comma t will be if i substitute n is equal to 0 it is d 0 e raised to power 0 cos 0 is 1 so this is a d 0 only that is pi square by 3 plus rest of them i can put as from 1 to infinity what is the value of the d n minus 4 times of this quantity now look at the third question again it's a heat equation which is of type 2 again i can start from the u is equal to x into t i can substitute this value here it is x of t dash x double dash of t i can take x on the left hand side and t on the right hand side and both are constants it must be i can write the equation which is given as again we will consider the three case lambda is 0 greater than 0 less than 0 when lambda is 0 i can substitute the value of lambda here you will get x double dash 0 t dash 0 what is the value of the x c1 plus c2x and t will be c3 now you will get the solution apply all those terms whose right hand side is my 0 so 0 comma t is my 0 and u of l comma t is my 0 fine what will happen if x is 0 c1 c3 is 0 if x is equal to l i can open this bracket c1 c3 plus c2 c3 l is equal to 0 since c1 into c3 is 0 what does it implies c2 c3 is my 0 because l can never be 0 here x is less than of this quantity so c1 c3 is 0 c2 c3 is 0 if i substitute in this expression you will get u as my 0 therefore this solution is discard k second because there is no k involved i can take k lambda is k scale what is the equation of this again you can write the auxiliary equation m square minus k square is 0 you can see that i have used the same approach whatever the statement is there you have to approach the same case again you can see as t approaches infinity u is not goes to the 0 or you can say u is also infinity but we need as a bounded so therefore this case is also discarded look at the third case when lambda is my negative then clearly say i can write the auxiliary equation is m square plus k square is 0 that is my plus minus i out k out fine now our target again to find the c1 c2 and k now once you know this is my solution again you have to apply firstly all those conditions whose right hand side is my 0 so let's see u 0 comma t so when x is equal to 0 so it's c1 c sine will be 0 
e raised to power minus k square of t clearly say this value can never be zero because if this number will be zero then u will be zero so this implies c1 will be zero because if c1 will be zero still you have this unknown quantity look at this quantity cl so if i substitute here c1 is my zero so this value will be zero c2 sin kl e raised to power minus k square of t zero again this value can never be zero because otherwise u will be zero c2 again can never be zero because if c2 will be zero c1 is already zero so u is will be zero so the only case is sin kl will be zero you can see that there is no term involving kl it's a sin kx but we need a kl so this implies kl is my n pi so that means k will be n pi over l where n start from the 0 1 2 and so substitute this c1 and k in this equation so this will be 0 i can substitute k and k and cold c2 as my dn now apply the principle of the superposition you will get this expression now the last value i can apply as u 0 x comma 0 will be 5 so this number will be 5 t is equal to 0 this value will be 1 so this number will be again you can never compare them so therefore it is a half range because the involvement of the sign is a sign series so your target is to find the value of d and it's a 2 over l l will be my l 0 to l fx sign of this value n pi over l x into dx what is my fx fx is my phi now what is the integration of this 10 over l is outside integration of the sign will be cos n pi x divided by n pi l now can you solve this is a n pi now minus when you substitute l l will be cancel out cos n pi minus 1 raised to power n when you substitute 0 minus minus plus cos 0 will be 1 so your dn will be minus of this substitute this value of the dn at this equation you will get the right answer as 10 over pi is outside this divided by this n e raised to power minus is the required answer look at this another case again you can see this is my heat equation and this is my type 2 fine i hope you can like my video you will see that it is my it is uh, useful for you again i can start from this substitute value in the given equation you will get this equation i will consider the three cases again firstly when lambda is equal to 0 i can substitute the value of lambda in these two cases your x double dash will be zero t dash will be zero so can you find the equations the solution will be now look at all those cases whose right hand side will be zero so you can see the second case how you read the second case u is zero if x is zero find for all the t so the this value will be zero and when or x is equal to pi fine now you can see the right hand side is my zero so i have to consider these cases at this point now substitute this value again if you x is zero it's a c1 c3 will be zero if x is equal to pi i can open this bracket it's a c2 c3 pi is my zero c1 c3 will be zero this implies c2 c3 is my zero i can substitute c1 c3 zero in this equation c2 c3 in this equation you will get as u is my zero fine so therefore this case is discarded look at the second case when lambda is equal to k square again you write the auxiliary equation is m square minus k square zero m is plus minus k and for this case m minus c square k square or m will be so i can write the auxiliary equations through solution is my this once you know x and t i can substitute this value you will get this again you can see 
as t tends to infinity u is also infinity because of the positive nature but we need a finite which is infinite so this case is also discard now the third case is when it is a negative you will get the solution as this number then our target is to find the c1 c2 and k again we will get the solution then again we will apply all those condition whose right hand side is my zero so let's start again with this one that means x is my zero so if x is zero it is my c1 sin zero will be zero e raised to power minus k square c square of t is my zero clearly say this number can never be zero because again u will be zero if this happens this implies c1 will be zero now if i apply this pi that is a x is equal to pi c1 is a zero this will be c2 sin k into pi e raised to power minus c square k square into t is my zero again this number can never be zero because otherwise u will be zero c2 again can never be zero because if c2 is zero c1 is already zero then u will be zero then only the case arises here is sin of k pi will be zero once the sin k pi will be zero k pi will be my n into pi so k will be n fine substitute the value of the c1 and k in this equation this will be zero this value i can take as a dn now since n is my 0 1 2 and so on then according to the superposition principle i can start from this now you can see i skip the value of the zero because i start from the one because what is the value of the zero when n is zero sin zero is zero so this number is complete zero so that's why i started from the one then the last case is we have to apply this condition what is the meaning of this u is at t is equal to zero that means x comma zero so if i take this as fx substitute this value this is fx fx is basically here when x t is equal to zero this number is my one we will get as a half inch sin series then you can find the value of the dn by using this form now since it's a zero to pi so what you can do you can break them from the zero to pi by 2 and then pi by 2 to pi what is the value of the zero to pi by 2 fx it is my x sin of nx and the second case is pi minus x you can integrate this again by parts or you can use my previous trick you can take the derivative and you can take the integration divided by n minus sin nx over n square then this number is positive this number is my negative so this integration will be minus x cos nx divided by n plus minus minus plus sin nx by n square similarly for this now you can substitute these limits if you substitute pi by 2 it's a minus pi over 2 into n cos n into pi by 2 plus sin n pi by 2 and so clearly say this two terms will be cancel out and this is my double so it's a 4 times pi times n square sin n pi over I can substitute this value of dn at this point, and then finally you will get the solution of this problem. Look at this another question. Again, it's a temperature slab initial. Now initial condition is given to you. You can see. Firstly, it's a differential equation. Fine. The temperature is kept at the zero. That means u is my zero. but what is the position x is by 0 there is no given about the time so at the point l and is 0 so this is the condition and the third condition is given to you as this so i can left this axis you can see i can uh, go up to this case by taking the solution as this then case 1 when lambda is 0 you will get the solution of this nature apply all those conditions whose value 
on the right hand side is my zero again you will see after solving you will get c1 c2 zero and c2 c3 zero substitute this value in this case you will get u as a zero so solution is discard second case again you will get the solution again you can see as t approaches infinity this solution is discard the third case when lambda is my minus k square you will get this solution and our target is to find the c1 c2 and k apply all those cases whose right hand side is my zero so x is zero c1 e raised to power minus k square c square t is equal to zero now again this number can never be zero this implies c1 is zero when it is l so it is my c2 sin kl because c1 is my zero e raised to power minus k square c square of t is zero clearly say this number can never be zero otherwise u will be zero c2 can never be zero because c1 is already a zero then if c2 is zero again u will be zero hence sin kl will be zero so this implies k l is my n pi hence k is n pi over l substitute the value of the c1 and k at these two points you will get this form again as you can see n is my zero this whole will be zero by the principle of supervision i can start from this as a one then i can apply the last condition u x comma zero is my you can start right as a one fine now which is again half range sign series i can find the solution by taking zero to n what is this fx i can break from zero to l over two and then l over two to n this value will be zero this value will be a sine of n pi x over now a is a constant you can take an is outside what is the integration of this sine n pi x is a cos and you can substitute this limit this l will be cancel out it's a n pi when you substitute l by 2 it's my cos 2 n pi fine l will be cancel out minus minus plus cos 0 will be cos 0 will be 1 so what is this number what is this number it is always 1 because it is my minus 1 raised to power 2 and it is always 1 so it is my 0 so uh, is it something mistake uh, some mistake will be there it is sorry it's a x it is n pi by 2 fine if you substitute x is my l by 2 is a cos n pi by 2 so instead of this it is my 2 a over l it is minus cos n pi over 2 minus plus so i can substitute this value of the dn at this point and you will get this solution instead of this you can write it as cos n pi over 2 and so okay look at one more example again you can see it's a polynomial then you can start from this and you will get at this point. now that that you can solve by on lambda is positive greater than as i discussed in previously you can find the solution by on you will get this equation then because we get a solution i can apply the cases because we need a partial derivative so i need to firstly find the del u by del x what is the value of the del u by del x it's come to be this number then i can substitute this x is equal to 0 in my del u by del x so sin 0 will be 0 it is k c2 e raised to power minus c square k square of t then again this number can never be zero k can never be zero fine then c2 will be zero second case when you substitute l one c2 will be zero this quantity will be zero minus c1 sin kl this this number can never be zero c1 can never be zero because c2 is already zero so if c1 will be zero the whole quantity will be zero so what is the meaning of that kl will be n pi so k will be n pi over so i can substitute both the values of the c2 
and k in this equation you will get left as a c1 i called dn is my c1 now when i take n is 0 this is my non zero so i can start from the zero now finally i can substitute the last limit that is my which is the half range cosine series for the cosine series you need to find the d0 you have to find the d now what is the d0 is 1 over l fx dx fine and dn will be 2 over l fx cos n pi x over l from 0 to now can you integrate them i think it's a very easy that you can do it by on even so it's a x cube by 3 from 0 to l substitute the upper limit and lower limit you will get l square by 2 again how you can solve this? I can again use my previous trick. This is the n pi x over l. I can take that derivative until it becomes a 0. And I can take this is integration n pi over l minus cos. And then you can use plus minus plus minus root. Fine. Now I can substitute the limit from the 0 to l. So if I substitute l, it is lx minus is a 0 l minus 2l is a minus l so minus minus plus l it's a pi n pi minus l square n square pi square cos and it's a sine n pi 0 when you substitute 0 it is a 0 this number is cos 0 1 it is my minus minus plus l l square over n square pi square this is my 0 fine now you can take a minus common l square common one will be cancelled out you will get this expression now substitute the d0 and dn in this case i can open this bracket when you take n is equal to 0 it's a d0 this is my one cos 0 is one and the rest value i can take an s dn of this same quantity so i can substitute that this value l square by 6 and this value is a minus 2 l square but that is this now so this is the way you can solve this uh, heat equation in a very simple manner i hope you can like comment and subscribe my youtube channel we will see the next lecture how we can solve the wave equation i will come up the next lecture with the same manner as i explained you in this lecture i hope you can like comment and share my video with your friends best of luck students happy learning